Hi guys, Jared Krause, host of the Buying Online Businesses podcast. And today I get to speak to Spencer Hawes, who is the man behind Niche Pursuits. If you haven't heard his podcast, it is an absolutely amazing podcast. And Spencer's been buying website businesses for quite a while. And he's also started out growing and starting website businesses, particularly in the content niche. And because of his success, he's gone out and built multiple tools for people in the SEO space, such as Longtail Pro, Table Labs, Organic Traffic Formula, and Link Whisperer, who in their own right and their own mind, each of these businesses has had great success. Now, Spencer has also founded motioninvest.com where they help people buy businesses sub $70,000 because there's a massive need for people wanting to buy businesses under that price range without the scarcity and having to beat so many other people on other brokerage websites. So we talk about how to buy websites as well, what we need to look out for when we're buying sites and then how to grow these websites so we can have success scaling them and achieving our lifestyle and financial goals. So if you're looking to buy a website business, sub $70,000 and wanting to learn how to grow it as well, make sure you check out this episode because there's so many gold nuggets that you don't want to miss out on. Today's episode is brought to you by Investors Club. Investors Club is a paid members only marketplace for serious buyers interested in proven businesses that aren't listed anywhere else because sellers sign a two month exclusivity agreement to only list with the membership. Now, there's also no purchase fees or commission, meaning the seller nor the buyer ever pay commission in any deal. Each listing has next level metrics to make due diligence far less time consuming, making it quicker for you to seal the deal. With a membership, you have access to a no fee escrow service and they have great Q&A support available for both buyers and sellers. I'm a member myself and a lot of thought and effort has gone into this service. However, there are a limited amount of seats available for this membership. So go and check them out at their URL, which is investors.club. That's investors.club. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Buying Online Businesses episode. And like I mentioned in the intro, very excited, get to speak to Spencer Hawes. Uh, welcome on, Spencer. Really glad to have you on. Yeah, Jared, it's great to uh, be on the podcast. Great to connect. Yeah, I've been watching you for a while now, um, much before I started podcasting. And when I started podcasting, I was like, I definitely want to, you know, contact you and, and get in touch and, and do a podcast swap. And we've done exactly that. And our last chat was really good. We came on yours, or I came on yours, and uh, really looking forward to asking you some questions, being on the other side of the fence now. Um, last time we chatted, you let me know, like, and I've seen, you've obviously bought multiple sites, you built them up and sold them. Uh, what sort of led you to, cause you you come from, you know, being a niche pursuit, starting these sites and, and being quite good at content sites. What sort of led you to wanting to buy sites? Yeah. So, uh, buying sites just provides a lot of advantages. Um, you can skip the entire building process, right? So, so building from scratch, uh, it can take a year, two years before you really start to see good results. So buying a site, you immediately can buy something that is producing income and uh, can provide also provide a great return on an investment, right? So you, you skip all that time. Then hopefully, if you know what you're doing, you can make some minor improvements to the site to grow it quicker to see, you know, go from making, you know, X to two X uh, or three X. Right. And so that's, that's the, the, the big reason to start buying sites is you can get a lot of bang for your buck and you can have a site making good money right off the bat. Yeah. And that's exactly why, what led me to buying, buying online businesses, uh, pun right. not included, but that I started sites, Spencer and I just sucked, to be honest. Like I didn't know what I was doing. And a lot of people start out like that. But I just thought, well, hang on. And, and I was a tradie, right? So I used to be a plumber. And everybody on the site was telling me, you need to work smarter, not harder. So I tried to apply that in the online space. And I thought, well, how can I do this a smarter way? And I came across a, across a quote that said 90% of startups fail. I'm like, well, surely I can buy a website business as past that. And that's the beauty of it is that you've got something that's already passed the test. 
and then you can just add on your skills that you've already built and learnt in the online space to to scale that and grow that. And so, is that what you've done? If you you go away and look at content sites to buy, has that been your strategy? Yeah, so um, buying content sites is definitely uh, what I've done. I've bought a number of sites over the years, but um, if we want to talk specifics, you know, I, I purchased a couple in the last year and a half that were both six-figure acquisitions, and they're content sites. Um, you know, that's where I'm experienced. I've built a lot of content sites. I feel comfortable in the space. And so I made um, a couple of acquisitions that I felt like I could go in and, and make those improvements. And I do, and to your point, I 100% agree that um, if you can buy something that is past that initial phase of where startups fail, right? You already know there's a model here that works. There's uh, a website that's working. It's ranking well. It's getting a lot of traffic. Um, so a lot of the question marks are gone. The question marks that remain are, can you grow it? And how quickly can you grow it? And then, you know, to a lesser extent, can you prevent it from declining, right? Can you at least maintain what it has, if nothing else? Yeah, which is huge. At like the part of due diligence is like some people rush through this. And I just think it's so important because not only are you asking yourself, like, is this going to decrease and how do I minimize my risk or how do I minimize what risks may be involved with the site? But also, what is that time frame of growing it and what can I do? So in your due diligence process, are you first looking at how do I remove these risks or minimize these risks? And then secondly, are you looking at all right, what are the things that would be the low hanging fruit and how long would it take me to execute that and see a result? And then what would be the more macro term things you'd be looking at? Is that sort of a process or how does that how does that? you know, play out for you when you're doing your due diligence. Right. So you often have to look at a lot of sites before you can find something that is really valuable that uh, doesn't have a lot of those um, question marks or red flags. And so when I'm doing my due diligence, a lot of it is just eliminating a lot of the obvious um, problem sites. So you don't want to buy something that typically, at least for me, you know, I don't want to buy a site that's declining in traffic uh, and earnings. Um, I don't want to buy something that is just brand new. I want something that's been established that is, you know, been making money for three or four years, um, potentially, right? Let less could be okay, but the longer, the better that it's been established. And I look at the backlink profile. Are there a lot of spammy backlinks? Um, I look at, is there any one main source of traffic? And what are the risks associated with that traffic source? So if it's all coming from Pinterest uh, or if it's all coming from Google, you need to be aware that that's a lot of risk with just Google or just with Pinterest or just with Facebook or whatever. And you just need to be aware of that and make sure that you can maintain that same traffic level or be able to diversify. And so uh, the other thing I would look at is uh, all your traffic coming through one main keyword or to one main page, right? So if you rank number one in Google for a really popular term, or if the site ranks in Google for one particular term, and that gets 90% of the traffic, uh, that's definitely a big red flag that would probably make me avoid that site, right? Um, you know, I want something that's got hundreds or maybe thousands of ranking keywords that are all, you know, well diversified. So if one you know, the next day isn't ranking very well in Google, it's not, my site's not going to take a bit, very big hit, right? It's not 90% of the traffic and earnings. And so those are some of the things that I look at in due diligence is definitely um, trying to eliminate the obvious losers first. And then once I get to the ones that sort of pass some of these initial due diligence tests, I dive deeper, of course, and look at the earnings and um, the, the sources of the earnings. And then start, to your point, looking at how can I improve the site? You know, thinking about a site that, for example, I, you know, I, I bought one about a year and a half ago and it did, it got most of its traffic from Pinterest. And so when I looked at it with my lens of SEO, which is what I you know, spend a lot of my time on my content sites doing, I figured, all right, here's a really well-established site uh, it's been around for 10 years. It gets a lot of traffic from Pinterest that can potentially be a little bit risky, but I believe 
that it's been under optimized severely in Google. And I believe there's a lot of potential there uh, where I could make some tweaks to the site, make it rank better, and also add new content and, and focus on SEO, which is my strength. And so we've been able to do that and, and see some returns there. But generally speaking, that's kind of what I'll look at is what are the opportunities for growth, whether that's a new traffic source, it could be adding uh, a new monetization um, opportunity, which I've done on, on the other site that, that I purchased about a year and a half ago is we've launched a couple of new products um, to that particular audience. Rather than just relying on their existing products, we thought, how can we monetize this in a new and better way to see a better return? So those are a couple of the things that I'll, I'll definitely look at to help grow and make a site more valuable. Yeah, I love it. And one of the things that I really picked up on is that you said uh, you're not looking to buy a site that's declining. And that's so important for people to understand. I had a client that just literally yesterday, I finished helping them with a due diligence review. It's part of what I do in our community is I help people I skim through their due diligence and just review it to make sure they're not going and buying a lemon. Anyway, he had a site uh, for sale and they're heavily reliant on Pinterest traffic. And like you said, one source sensitivity is not good. And that can be whether it be from one algorithm being Facebook, Google, YouTube, you know, Pinterest, being wherever, or it could be one source sensitivity on one of those algorithms being keywords or links. And so uh, this site had a uh, one source sensitivity from Pinterest heavily and on top of that it was already affected throughout 2019 with the Pinterest algorithms which you've seen and I've seen a lot of uh, sites that have really been affected from the Pinterest changes last year and, and also starting off in 2018 and so a part of a part of that I really want people to understand is that a if a site's declining down that it's important to understand you have some natural laws that are forcing that down to reverse that it makes it really really hard b if it's a one source sensitivity at either platform or on one platform and still having one source i.e link or keyword that you know you're still putting yourself at risk and if you've got the skills like you do, Spencer, or, or we do with our teams to diversify that and minimize that risk, then you can go forwards and proceed. But certainly buying a site that's already declining makes it so much harder, especially if you're a first time buyer. So I really, really am glad that you brought that up. Uh, and guys, come back and listen to this podcast episode again and, and see Spencer's approach on just minimizing the risk, seeing what's there are, and then how can he add value and what will be low hanging fruit and what can he do next? So that's absolute gold. Thank you, Spencer. And what is like you bought multiple sites. What are some of the, th and you've been in the content space and, and your, your gun in the SEO um, changes that you can do to sites. What are some of the things that you're, you've seen through buying sites? Like what are some of the things that you've learned that you feel like, wow, I'd, I never thought I would have picked that up. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of things actually. Um, and a couple of them do come down to, uh, Pinterest. Um, you know, Pinterest is an area that I really never had dipped my toes in until I bought a site. Uh, the first time I bought a site that was monetized with Pinterest actually quite a few years ago, maybe four or five years ago, uh, not monetized, but most of the traffic was coming from Pinterest. Um, and that just opened my eyes to the possibilities of the traffic uh, that can come from Pinterest. Um, and so that kind of being an aha uh, actually led me to now that's become an important part of my new niche site that I've just started from scratch as well. I want Pinterest to be a big part of that. Whereas if I hadn't bought a site previously that you know, I, I could see all the traffic that was coming from Pinterest. I probably would have just stuck with, you know, I'm good at Google SEO and that, that works. But so I've, I've added that layer on, you know, my new niche sites that I build is I add that as an important traffic source because I know it can be, it can be huge. Another one is 
I, I don't know if it's necessarily new, but just adding um, different monetization strategies um, you know, that I, I've been able to apply. And I, I've seen other people do this in some of the case studies they've shared when they purchase sites. And so um, now that I'm buying sites, I'm always thinking about, okay, what's a new way we could monetize this site? Yes, maybe it's monetized with Amazon Associates and display ads, right? I want to optimize that, but maybe there's a completely new affiliate program I should be joining that can bump up the revenue um, or creating my own product like I did with uh, this recent acquisition. Um, we've added a couple of new, and it's fbamaster.com is a site that I bought about a year and a half ago that uh, we created um, a new Chrome extension that's, that's done really well uh, for that particular audience. And uh, we've created another sort of done for you uh, service uh, in that space that has done pretty well uh, also. So, being able to think about, yeah, new ways to monetize, um, just, just learned a lot in different products that can be created, types of revenue sources beyond the, the typical maybe, you know, affiliate type model sites. Yeah, because you could buy a site that is with, you know, AdSense and an affiliate affiliate program and you may go to Mediavine and see, all right, I can get the similar type of ads that my audience may like even more or the placements and the speed for the content site. And then you could also bump up your revenue. And then also by changing a, an affiliate program, you could, you know, be getting anywhere from like eight to 9% and, and start bumping that up with a higher percentage with a different platform. And I think that's just the low hanging fruit that some people may not actually know is available if they don't know to go to it so i'm glad you brought that up and especially you know when you could quite easily go all right well i know a lot about seo i could do some on-site seo i could do some off-site seo like link building and all that type of stuff that could be your go-to and it's the same with other people with different skills in different business models as well coming back to the seo what are some of the things that are your go-to you know when you do see a content site in terms of the low hanging fruit in that and and building it is that are you doing some pruning doing some quick on-site stuff decreasing the site's uh speed uh, are you doing link building campaigns what are some of the quick quick wins that you go for yeah so when i uh take over a content site the first thing that i'll do is sort of export all the pages and look at which ones are getting the most traffic uh, so I look at those pages that can have the biggest impact um, and then I will look at how well they, they are optimized on page. And so I'll go through, like I said, I'll, I'll take the top 20 articles on the site already and optimize those to start with. And what I mean by optimize is um, I might use tools like there's Market Muse. Um, there's Surfer SEO, which I think has become quite popular recently, uh, and other tools that can look at, you know, the keywords that you're using in the H2 headings. The, are you, you know, um, using the right word count? Are you basically optimizing it from an SEO on page perspective as much as possible? And then I'm updating that content, usually adding, you know, 300 words or 500 words or, or 1,000 words, just depending on uh, what the keyword is. So I will look at the top 10 results in Google and essentially say, okay, this article appears to already be doing well. Maybe it's on the bottom of page one, but what can I do to make it the top of page one to rank number one in Google? And so that's definitely the first thing that I will focus on is re-optimizing, updating uh, content. And I've seen really big results from doing that. Um, and then step two, what I will do is do internal linking. So I'll go in and of course I have a tool now, Link Whisper, uh, yeah. which is an internal linking tool. And so Check I really it out, do. Guys, it's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, I will go into Link Whisper, but there's other tools essentially to find out which of your pages don't have any internal links already. We call these orphaned pages, right? They have no internal links. Um, and so you're kind of, a lot of times, shooting yourself in the foot. I mean, you haven't even added a single internal link to 
um, an article that was written already. And so by just adding a few internal links to, to each page, um, you can see big results from that as well. I've seen jumps from, I was just doing this recently on one of my sites, you know, articles that are ranking really low. Like I've had some that are ranking like 40 or 50 jump up to the first page of Google after wow. adding just one or two internal links. That's right. Amazing. Just a little bit of link juice can sometimes go a long way depending on how easy the keyword is. Um, and so those are the two main things that I, that I do is I update existing content uh, and then I add internal links and make sure that on-site structure is really good um, yeah. when I buy a website. And it's pretty like, it's pretty simple stuff really. Like adding, you know, refining content, adding some words in and, you know, throwing a few links around, which Google absolutely is loving but I've found more and more and more is just like really good site mapping and interlinking to not just like, hey, I'm going to link to my homepage or my about page here, but like valuable pages on right. this site as well, right? It's not, I don't want people to just think, oh, I'm just going to put a bunch of links down the bottom of this article like some like I might do in my podcast article. <laughs> it's like got to be valuable, <laughs> not just chuck them in there. Um, right. Yeah, so... Let's talk about your tools. I mean, you've done a lot. Uh, Link Whisperer. Uh, we're going to talk about Motion Invest shortly uh, to switch gears. What other tools have you created, and and if so, why? Like, was there just a need? You like, I just want this problem solved. What what sort of led you to creating these, and what were they? Yeah. So always has been out of my own need. All the tools that I've created. Um, you know, I am actively building websites and building online businesses. And so I come across problems, um, in the process of, of building my businesses. And so I say, you know what, I'm not finding a really great software tool out there. I think a lot of other people would like this cause I'm coming into the, uh, up against this problem. And so I'll go and I'll create it. So the first software tool I created back in 2011, uh, was Longtail pro. It was a keyword research tool. And uh, definitely was was out of my own need. Um, you know, I created Longtail Pro. It, it's a business that did really, really well. Um, I exited that business um, about three years ago. I sold a, a majority stake of it. I still own a, a small portion of it, but I don't uh, run the day-to-day -day operations um, of that business anymore. But it's still a great business, still a great tool that I use. So Longtail Pro is the first one. And then I've also created uh, Table Labs. Um, it's a small uh, little tool that hasn't taken off as well, but it's a product comparison uh, table creator. So for Amazon affiliates, if they want to create a table in their article that compares the top 10 running shoes or racquetball rackets or whatever, um, it's a really fast and easy way to create beautiful looking product comparison tables that already have your affiliate link, you know, with the images, with the buttons and everything. So it's a great little tool, uh, Table Labs. Uh, and then um, I have created another small WordPress plugin that I built and I, I sold actually about a year and a half later uh, called AMZ Image. Just helps you insert uh, product images from Amazon with your affiliate link. Super simple tool, again, and I sold that business already. Uh, but then the new one that I've created is Link Whisper. Uh, it's been about six months, and Link Whisper is uh, one I'm really excited about. Um, yeah, it's 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 growing business on in its own right for sure. Um, but it's a tool that that I love. Um, it's for internal linking, like I already explained in my previous example. One thing that it does is help you find those orphaned pages. Um, you know, you can quickly run a report on your entire site and see exactly how many internal links each of your articles have, right? Um, and you can do a whole lot more with that, right? You can expand the list and see where those internal links are coming from. You can see how many uh, links you have pointing out to other external websites from each article, et cetera. But the real magic is in sort of the link suggestion algorithm. So uh, when you are writing a brand new article in your WordPress editor, uh, sort of below that article, you will get internal link suggestions. Uh, and so it'll take the sentences you've already written and I'll say, okay, you've mentioned, you know, the best dog food in the sentence. You should link to your best dog food article. And it already, it adds the anchor text for you. All you do is 
click a box uh, and it adds the internal link uh, for you. So you can easily add five, 10, 15 or more internal links based on the suggestions um, within a matter of seconds. Uh, so it makes that much faster. And then again, um, through the report, you can then add inbound internal links to articles that have already been written. So it, let's say you've got your best dog food article that you already wrote. You can inbound uh, and to the one that you're just writing now at the moment. Right, and yeah. you, you see that, hey, this has no internal links. I want, I want 10 new internal links to this best dog food article. Um, Link Whisper makes it super easy. It'll suggest here's 10 other articles that should be linking to your best dog food article. Click these boxes and, and it's done, right? So really, really cool uh, WordPress plugin, but those are the four, uh, I think I got that right, four uh, software products that I've created all out of my, my own need, my own desire to improve my own business, but definitely saw a market need for all of those um, as well. Yeah, guys, check out Link Whisper. It's absolutely awesome. While we're on internal linking, before we move to motion, uh, the link interlinking, is there too many links, inbound links that you can have on your page? And if so, what is too many? What's a, a good range that you feel without, you know, somebody having a 2000 word article with 20 links, you know, bunched up in a, in a, in a space? <laughs> yeah, that's, um, I don't know that there's an exact uh, number uh, because it can depend, right? If, if you've got a, like a listicle article, yeah, right? Um, it, it, might so many. it might have 50, right? Or, or whatever. Um, so it kind of depends. Maybe a rule of thumb, um, if I were to create one on the fly, is probably, yeah, no more than like one internal link per 100 words. That's a great rule. Right? Yeah. You know, that, that's again, a rule of thumb. So if you have a 2000 word article, 20 internal links is, is kind of getting to the maximum, right? Um, so, but again, that, that can vary greatly. It could be more or less just kind of depending on the purpose of the article. Awesome, thanks. And Let's talk about Motion Invest now. Uh, I've spoken to John, and I know you're you're building out this with. Well, it's already in Motion, guys. Literally, <laughs> pun included. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, Motion Invest is. I'll let you tell us more about Motion Invest. Actually, um, I absolutely love it, and I'm pushing more clients to it uh, because it's it's like again, as you build a build a business, it's out of the need. It's not like, hey, I'm just going to build a startup. It's like, no, solve a problem. And that's, that's right. where you can add value. So you're following that format since you have for, for multiple years with your tools, but now you've got Motion Invest and I'm actually really excited about it. So I'll let you dig in and tell us more about what this actually is. Yeah. So uh, the problem that we saw with buying and selling websites is twofold. Uh, one is if you have a smaller content site, say something making a thousand dollars a month or five hundred dollars a month or less and uh, you want to sell that you really don't have a lot of options you know um, the bigger brokerages like FE International, Quiet Light Brokerage, others you know they want seven figure businesses um, and even Empire Flippers which started out in the smaller range now they really want the seven figure businesses right they still sell some smaller sites but for the well, most part that's not where they're focused. Yeah, I mean, uh, I even know, because I speak to Empire Flippers and a lot of clients buy from them. Uh, I know that they're, it costs them it costs them money to sell businesses and they don't make a lot on the smaller sites. And uh, after speaking to Alex, uh, who's the director of sales there, you know, they've got sites selling between, you know, 50 or, you know, zero to $70,000 in literally seconds. Uh, right. So the need for these smaller sites is real. Like there's so many people out there wanting to kind of, I guess you could call it dip your toes in the water uh, right. and buy these sites sub, sub 50 even, you know, sub right. 100. And so, you know, if you're, you're trying to buy or sell in this range, you don't have a lot of good places to go. Um, you know, there's Flippa, which there are a lot of sites in that range, but as you know, Jared, I mean, it's, it's kind of a wild, wild west still, you know, there can be unverified earnings. There can be people that are trying to take advantage of you. 
yes, there, there can be good sites there, uh, but you have to dig through a lot of not so good sites. Um, and so it can be really difficult, especially if it's, you know, maybe your first or second site ever to buy, um, you know, going on Flip It to find something good it can be difficult. It can be difficult. <laughs> to say right? the least. <laughs> to say the least. Right. And so uh, this is the problem that we're trying to solve on Motion Invest. So Motion Invest is a place where you can both buy and sell small content sites in that range of, you know, making $50 a month to up to maybe $2,000 a month, right? Sort of our sweet spot is somewhere around the $500 to $1,000 a month type, type site. Um, and so what we are doing though is uh, it's, it's not a, a brokerage. Um, we are actually buying sites. So we find a lot of off-market deals ourselves. And when I say we, there's, there's three partners, me, John Gillum and Kelly Van Boxmeer. Um, we started Motion Invest together. So we go out, we find a lot of off-market uh, sites to buy and we do a lot of due diligence. I mean, we're passing up on 90% of the sites that we look at. So because we are buying these websites, right? We don't want to get stuck with a lemon ourselves. So we, we pass on a lot of deals, but um, we've been able to, to find enough good sites uh, that we buy them. And then um, some we might end up keeping and building a portfolio. But for the most part right now, we are then selling them on Motion Invest. So people can come on to motioninvest.com. They can buy these sites that we've already vetted. We feel like we believe they're a good investment. We believe it enough that we bought them, right? And so if nobody buys them, we still own them. Like we can't, you know, sell them back. We're not a brokerage. Um, and so we, we feel like we're, we're hoping to create a marketplace where people uh, know they're finding pre-vetted websites in that smaller content range. Um, and so that's the gap that we're, we're feeling. Motion Invest has been up for a few months now. Um, we've sold, I don't know what the number is, but you know, maybe 30 transactions at this point. And uh, we hope to, to grow that because we do see a big need, a big gap in the marketplace uh, that I just explained there. Yeah, I absolutely love it. When, when John reached out to me initially, uh, and then I started chatting to you. I was just like, "Oh, it's 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 been too long that you know that space hasn't been done well because you've got Exchange Marketplace and you've got Flipper, though. And I know I speak to the CEO of Flipper, and you know I know a lot about Marketplace, and they're doing their best to keep up with what the brokers are doing in in verifying and and validating certain metrics." Uh, though it's really hard to contain it and get a hold of it when you've got so many users as well <laughs> and right. not, you know, frustrating or annoying those users users and having them leave. Uh, Flip is growing at an, at an absolutely alarming rate. It's insane. Uh, and, you know, like, it's good to see that this, this is, this like a lot of my clients in my community, they want to buy sites that are making, you know, $1,000 to $2,000 a month. It's just, you know, it's hard to do due diligence within an hour before something sells <laughs> on these other brokers. Uh, so right. there's a, th a th the way I see this is you've got, you've got bigger investors than most people want to start out at, you know, and they could be funds, you know, they could be doing, you know, have 10 million or they could have 20 or whatever. And they're just going to buy things. They've got they've got money on account ready to just buy things as soon as they come out because they know without doing too much due diligence and they're already heavily verified sites that they can add that to a portfolio that are going to build sites up already. Uh, you know, other like in the same niche as the sites they already own, it'll be a, a an add on or bolt on site, so they know that it's going to be they're going to get their ROI back from it. Uh, whereas somebody is just buying an individual site, it can be, it can be tough, really tough. So talk to me more about the process of, of buying through Motion Invest because so how does somebody comes to Motion Invest and they just say, hey, I want to, they just look at the sites, the list of the sale and they, you know, they get, they're allowed to go away and, and verify and validate and vet the site themselves as well. How does that process yeah. work? 
Yeah, absolutely. So the, the cool thing about um, Motion Invest is that it's free to create an account. We essentially just make you log in and then you can see all of the information related to the website, right? Um, and, and all the websites, right? It's, it's once you log in, you don't have to like request access or anything. It's, it's, it's all there. You can see the domain um, and then you can see all the due diligence that we've done, right? So we include all the screenshots from the earnings, the traffic, you know, the SEM rush data, the, you know, Ahrefs backlink data, et cetera. So we provide all those screenshots for you. But if you want to go and verify and do additional due diligence, right? Like you want to pull up Ahrefs on your own, like by all means, you know, you've, you've got the domain um, and, and you can do all of that. And so we make it really easy, at least we try to, to make it really easy to do that due diligence. We provide, like I said, everything that we uh, use to, to make, you know, a decision essentially for us, right, to feel like, hey, this is a good site, you know, worth listing and selling. Um, and so, yeah, it, be, people can log in and see all the information, do that due diligence for them. And in the, when they're ready to buy, um, you know, we make it pretty easy to, to do that as well, right? Just click the buy button. Um, you know, we make the transition process really fast and easy. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. Guys, check out Motion Invest. Uh, and I'll have a link down here in the bottom, along with all the links to all the tools that you've created as well, Spencer. And like, I want to ask you sort of a parting question, and we can dive into this a little bit more. But in the online space of buying websites and growing them and building, building them with what you know now, like for somebody starting out, what sort of advice would you tell yourself if you were in their position? You know, especially, like you said, it can be a bit of a wild, wild west, especially on, on these other marketplaces <laughs> where things aren't validated and vetted and, and, you know, also a wild, wild west in the space of, and it's getting better, things are getting ironed out, but still, like, there's so much junky information about how to grow sites, content sites, and all that sort of stuff. What would you tell yourself after everything you've learned up into this, this spot if you had to start out again? Mm hmm. Yeah. And um, I get a question a lot from people about whether they should buy a site or, you know, build one from scratch. That's sort of the age old question. Um, and I honestly, if I if I were to be starting over myself, I would buy a website. Um, and if I were new to the industry, didn't have a ton of knowledge in the space, I, I probably would buy recommend buying a smaller content website, right? I, I don't know what that number is, but you know, something that people can afford. If that's a site that's making $500 a month, that is a great place to start and sort of get your feet wet um, to learn the industry because I've always found that there is no better teacher than experience. And in particular from the SEO, you know, building a website business. Um, you, you can read all the blogs, you can listen to Jared's podcast, you can listen to my podcast all day long, but it isn't until you dive in and actually start, you know, optimizing a website and building internal links and uploading images and figuring out how to do hosting. And there's all these little questions that once you do it hands on the first time, um, you, you just learn a ton. And so if you have sort of a playground, right, of a, of a site that, you know, it's already making money. And um, if you screw it up, it's not the end of the world, <laughs> right? Like it's, um, you know, it's, that's the disadvantage. If you're to go buy a site that's making $10,000 a month and it's your first try ever, like that, that would be really bad if you tanked it because you did something stupid just because you didn't know. Um, but, uh, you know, having a smaller site, you kind of got this, this test ground where you can test ideas out and you can learn and it might take you six months or 12 months to kind of wrap your head around why is the site making money? Why is it ranking in Google? Why is it doing so well? Uh, but you'll have really sped up your education process over time. I mean, I, I, it took me several years, let me just say several years before I really understood um, SEO and, and building websites right? Like I built my first site uh, in 2005. It wasn't until 2011 that I was able to quit my job, right? So six years of sort of learning 
you know, and I basically, I never had any websites making any money for the first two or three years. Right. Um, I think I would have probably sped up that education process if I had something that actually was ranking in Google and making money, um, from day one. So, so that would be my, um, advice there. Um, but I'm happy to answer any more specifics. Um, uh, I'd love to answer to that question. No, yeah. I'd just love to talk on that because it's so it's such a good discussion to have, especially for somebody that's just like, all right, what do I actually do here? Like, what's what's the first step? Uh, and I love your approach, uh, and this is what I say to my clients who do jump in and they actually learn all the you know the programs and all the trainings and all the stuff that I have in my community. I say to them, guys, like, look, you can't just learn the theory even if it is like really good packaged up in a beautiful thing, you know, for you to go away and consume and it's actually going to help you get the results. Same with like listening to my podcast or your podcast or reading blogs and all that sort of stuff. I tell everyone that does join the community to know and not do is to not know, which means you can learn all the theory, but if you don't actually get in and take action, then you're not going to know how to do it. It's like you could learn the theory of like, all right, here's a bike. I'm going to learn how to ride a bike in theory. But you still can't actually do it. You don't know how to do it until you get on the bike and start riding it. And there's other quotes like, you know, the best way to learn business is to be in business. And I hands down agree with all of it. Because taking the action and doing it, you actually, you do make mistakes and you learn from them a lot quicker. And I think it's so important to start out with a site, yeah, making 500 bucks a month uh, and, and growing from there. And also, for me, I went through the same phase as you, Spencer, in my life, is starting sites that I just really sucked at. Like, I remember travel blogging. Like, in 2013, I typed into Google how to travel the world and make money online. That's the first step that I took. And I started travel blogging because that's what Google told me to do, basically. Yeah. And I just followed that process and went around and around in circles, learning a bit as I went until I went, my aha moment was 90% of startups fail. And then the same as you, like you've, I'm, I'm sure that you would have seen your income grow with much less work when you started buying sites, yeah? Right, right. And the other um, <clears throat> you know, point to, to buying a site that's really great is that it's, in my opinion, it's a lot easier to take a site from 500 to 1,000 or even $2,000 a month in earnings than it is to go from zero to 500, right? It, it really is just so much easier to take something, like you said, again, 90% of businesses fail. The number's probably higher for number of websites that <laughs> fail. So true. Right? Um, that are started from scratch. And so it, it really is easier to take something from 500 to, you know, much larger. Um, and so it's, it's uh, uh, I think, you know, probably easier uh, and more likely that it's going to continue to make money or grow than, you know, starting something from zero. Yeah, for sure. So guys, my advice for people that are still in that boat going, oh, like I've been sold to my whole life that if I need to make money online or be an entrepreneur, I need to start something. My advice for people is to just go away and check out brokerages and check out Motion Invest and look at the sites for sale. And then you can start to see, okay, this is what they're doing in terms of operation. This is what they're doing on a daily basis. This is how they're growing and, and running their sites. And you can get to see more of the picture and you can get to see, all right, this is sort, sort of the income that I'd be making from it. Rather, when you're starting from scratch, you it's so hard if you're not if you're not a, a visionary entrepreneur like I am, and I'd suggest you probably are Spencer as well. It's it's so hard to know what it's going to look like and how to put that together. Does that make sense? Right. Yep. Absolutely. It's hard to see the the big picture when you've never experienced the big picture. Yeah. And even for me, I'm a massive massive visionary. Like I I love to envision like what my goals and what the steps I need to take and how that's going to look, what team I'm going to need, what resources I'm going to need to, to get there. That's, that's a huge part of how I, how I grow and scale. But even for me, when 
I try to start something from scratch, I've got nothing to grab onto. So I just, it's hard for me to put those pieces of the puzzle together. So guys, I just suggest check out Motion Invest, check out the whole space and where you can buy sites from. And even just there, you can learn a lot in theory. And that learning that bunch in theory is really gonna help them when it's time to take action as well. Yeah. Right. Yep, 100% agree. Yeah. yeah. Spencer, thanks so much for jumping on. Like, I really appreciate the chat. Uh, everybody, I'm going to put all the show notes and links uh, in, sorry, links in the show notes. Uh, where can sp people find out more about you? Where would there be the first protocol to find out more about what you're doing and, and all that sort of stuff and contact you if they need? Yeah, the best place to go is nichepursuits.com. Uh, that's my blog. I've been blogging there for, for quite a few years. I've got a contact page um, if people want to go and get in touch with me, but uh, I pretty well keep that updated on, um, you know, what I'm doing, what I'm up to, what I'm learning, uh, et cetera. So definitely nichepursuits.com. Yeah. And check out his podcast, guys. It's absolutely awesome. He's been doing that for a while too. So thanks again. And yeah, looking forward to speaking to you soon. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Jared. Really appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks.